about helium balloons, right? Helium is a harmless gas that is less dense than air, which is why helium floats. If I was to breathe some helium, my voice sounds higher because helium is less dense than normal air, so my vocal cords vibrate faster. Ah! But have you ever wondered, is there a gas that's more dense than air? There is. It's called sulfur hexafluoride, and it's much more dense than air, so if I was to breathe some, my vocal cords would vibrate slower, making my voice lower. Ha 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 ha! This container is full of sulfur hexafluoride. Ooh, I know, it's invisible, you can't see anything. But watch as I blow some bubbles. The bubbles are floating on top of that layer of sulfur hexafluoride. The bubbles float because they're full of regular air, which is less dense than the sulfur hexafluoride. In fact, a balloon will float on this as well. The balloon floats lower because the weight of the latex also drags it down a bit. But the bubbles and the balloons are floating on a sea of sulfur hexafluoride. And it is like a sea because it's a fluid just like water, but it's more dense than regular air. Science! <laughs> it's awesome! to Sal's Science Shop and see me, Sal, while you shop for science. This week only, Sal's one-of-a-kind, once-a-year polymer sale. 50 to 75% off anything made of polymers. Rubber? That's a polymer. Polystyrene. When you're eating your next meal, I recommend some polypropylene. Low-density polyethylene. High-density polyethylene. You want some polytetrafluoroethylene? We got it. We've even got polychlorotrifluoroethylene. Did I even know how good a deal this is? Cause you're not gonna find, you're not gonna find that kind of deal just like every day. But hold the phone. Polymers aren't just plastics. Rayon, nylon, Teflon, you name the lawn, we got it on. Sale. What, what do, do we, we want? want? Polymers. When, when do we, we want them? them? Anytime during normal business hours. Wool, silk, even cotton. Polymers, polymers, polymers. Polymers, polymers, polymers. Word has lost all meaning. Glue, paint, umbrella fabric, oh yeah. Carpet, you bet that's on sale. Roberta, I'm running out of sale signs. Buy it and I'll put it in a plastic bag, also made of polymers. Seriously, Roberta, we can't have a sale on everything. Oh, hey, hey, even you, even me, the proteins in our bodies, even our DNA, all polymers. <laughs> so come on down to Sal's Science Shop and get a great deal on your polymers for a limited time. I mean, it'd have to be a limited time, right, Roberta? Because, I mean, I can't discount everything in the store to 75% off. How am I going to make any money? I mean, are we still rolling? One hundred different kinds of slime. Yes, it's gonna be so much fun, but we're not gonna make a hundred today. Yeah, I know. We're just gonna do our top favorites. Yeah, it's gonna be super great. All right, what are we starting with? So our first slime we're starting with today is some really cool molding slime. Now this slime, actually, if you leave it out overnight, it'll harden, and you can make an imprint of whatever you like. So here we made an imprint of our little uh, tool there. So we're gonna look at a little bit more liquidy slime, starting with this one over here, which I believe you already know about. This is cornstarch mud. Exactly. You hold this. Sounds good. I'm gonna good. hold this and we're gonna try pouring it. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. so. See, it's like it's like a liquid, but then you do it fast, it's like a solid. All right, what's next? Over here, we have some other really awesome types of slime. So right over here, we have some crunchy slime. Crunchy slime? Exactly. Why is it crunchy? Now, it's crunchy because we've actually added a few beads inside of it to make it crunchy. Uh -huh. so this is some really cool, awesome slime. Here, take half. And you can feel the beads as you get to stretch it out. It's so cool. This is why uh, this one is a little harder to clean. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'll just do that. All right, so what's next? So next we have some really cool glow-in-the-dark slime. Glow-in-the-dark slime? Yeah, it's so awesome. Ooh, look at how much it glows. That glows a lot. 
That's super glowy slime. So to do the different kinds of slime, we need the polymer. Yes. And then the thing that sticks the polymers together. Exactly. So the glue is the polymer. Glue is the polymer. And the starch is the thing that bonds it. Yes. Uh-huh. Very cool. And then you put the thing in that makes it the, the kind of slime. Yes, right before you add the bonding component, because if we keep uh, adding stuff after it's already made, it unfortunately won't be able to take it. So we add our powder before we add our starch in this situation. Uh, <laughs> should we go on to the next thing? Yeah, let's move on to more slime. slime. This is a light stick. It creates light using a chemical reaction. There's a liquid chemical inside and also a glass container that holds another chemical. When you bend the light stick, you break open the container and the two chemicals mix, creating light. There you go, light sticks, chemical reaction. And yes, of course we're gonna max it out. This is a whole bunch of the two chemicals in a light stick. Let's max it out. So how does a chemical reaction produce light? Well, a lot of chemical reactions produce energy. You might think of a chemical reaction producing heat. Well, heat is a kind of energy. This chemical reaction also produces energy, just energy in the form of light. It's just a different kind of energy. Whoa, Max out light stick! <laughs> and now for a Science Max quiz. Chemical change or not? What's a chemical change? Well, let's demonstrate. Look at this. It's a happy little molecule of iron. And here's another molecule of oxygen. If they were to have a chemical change, they would react and form different molecules. Look, it's a molecule of rust. Rust is a different chemical than either iron or oxygen. It's a chemical change. Now, if these molecules mixed and did not change, then it's not a chemical change, it's a physical change. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a chemical change just by looking, but asking what kind of change it is leads to good science. So let's look at some examples. Vinegar and baking soda. Is it a chemical change? Yes. Vinegar and baking soda react to form different chemicals. Sodium acetate, that's the white stuff that's left over, and carbon dioxide, which makes the bubbles. How about a nucleation fountain with diet cola and mints? Haha! -ha! A lot of people think that's a chemical change, but it's not. The mints cause carbonation, the bubbles, to escape faster. But in the end, you still have cola and mints, no new chemicals. And without the carbonation, nothing happens. So, it's a physical change. Take a guess at this one. Glow stick chemicals. Well, producing light or heat is usually a sign of a chemical change. How about mixing sugar and water to make a sugar pop? That's a physical change. You start with sugar and water, you mix them, and when you have a sugar pop, what chemicals are you left with? Well, sugar and water. So, no chemical change. It can be hard to tell sometimes, but whenever two things mix, think to yourself if it's a chemical change or a physical change. And now you know it's either one or the other. And that's the first step to good science. Thanks for playing our Science Max quiz. Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. My tuna fish and meatball sub soup is coming along quite nicely. But what will we have for dessert? I know. How about earthquake buildings? Ha <laughs> ha! It's a building made out of wafer cookies. But the people on Vanilla Street built in the gelatin neighborhood. And the people on Chocolate Street built in the crispy rice part of town. Exciting. Now, here comes the earthquake. Oh, no! Oh, it's shaking! Oh, the shaking has come and gone for the people on Chocolate Avenue, and their building is still standing. Now, let's take a look over here on Vanilla Street, and here comes an earthquake. Oh, no! Oh, dear! Looks like the people on Vanilla Street are going to have to rebuild their building because it's all fallen over and being eaten. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Buildings can be built the same way, but the kind of soil they sit on make a large difference if there's an earthquake. Shaky, wiggly soil or solid, non-moving soil. So there you go. An experiment you can try at home. Delicious. 
Well, I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on this episode of Cooking with Science. Mm, now to try my soup. Vibration and frequency. What's the difference? They're all connected. Ta-da! Now we get... Whoa. Oh. Vibration is things going back and forth. Back and forth. And back and forth. It's a cycle. Cycle, 25 bucks. Oh, yeah, it's the wrong kind of cycle. Never mind. Well, if that's vibration, then what's frequency? Well, frequency is a measure of how fast or slow, how frequent those vibrations happen. Look at this bowling ball. Whoa. It is swinging back and forth, but not very fast. Ugh. You could say it has a low frequency. We measure all kinds of things by the frequency. This thing is terrifying. When you turn the dial on your radio, you're tuning in to different frequencies of radio waves. Hey, look at this punching balloon. It's going very fast. You could say it has a high frequency. <laughs> so, now you know. Vibration is something going back and forth, and frequency is how quickly it does it. Yeah. Ramona, the bowling ball keeps coming through everything. How do you turn it off? Okay, back to our main experiment. Chris and I are taking a vibrobot and maxing it out. We have a large motor and a battery, and we're taping it all to some shelving. Just like our small vibrobot, our motor needs something to make it unbalanced when it spins. That's what will cause the vibrations. It's just taped. I haven't attached it in any other way. Do you think that's okay? As an engineer, I have superior faith in duct tape. Okay, well, that, that's good to know. We're also adding an on-off switch and some paintbrushes on the bottoms of the legs so our maxed-out vibrobot can make art just like the small one. The final step, dipping the brushes in paint and setting it on a big piece of paper. We fire it up and it immediately shakes everything off the shelves. Oh! It, it totally spilled all the stuff on the shelves. The motor shakes the vibrobot a lot. But there's a problem. All that shaking is starting to take its toll on the shelves. The wheels come off, the screws come out, and finally... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. It totally shook it itself apart. Destroyed itself. The shelving unit just completely falls apart when it's being shaken. Vibration is really hard on the structure of an object. We need something more sturdy, something that can that can take weight. Steps, maybe? Yeah. OK, hold on. OK. <laughs> OK. Yeah, this looks much better. OK, great. So we build the new Vibrobot out of this. So more paint brushes, bigger motor, more paint, more everything. More everything. All right, good. Here is an invisible tower. Huh? Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 I escaped. I'm just preparing my, I forgot my line. Hello. Just going to add some more salt to the soup. Mmm, delicious. Well, humans have been figuring out ways to figure out just that. I've been, I said figure out twice. I'm going to start again. OK. English is not my first language. I guess those are staying in there. <laughs> <laughs>